Even though be you were right for a day My life for entity But by now you will bring me out of shame To you I give my all When people for my hand give day my side When I don't know what to do to you Be my guide, child I owe my life to you Lord, I live to worship you If no be you, if no be you Where I for dead My life for entity Papa, now you will bring me out of shame To you I give my own When people fall my hand you give my sight When I don't know what it is to do you be my guide, child When I think of all you've done I know feet talk come all You know they disappoint Now you they pick me when I fall If you know before your grace If to say you know so face my life for no makes sense at all I will praise you all my day This life I live Is a testimony I'm grateful for your grace That has kept me in this race Witness, you've made my life a statement. In your love, I am contented. If no be you were I for me, my life for entity. Papa, now you will bring me out of shame. To, to, to you, I give my own. When people fall my hand, you give my side. Love your mercy short You know they fail I don't see result I must confess They are what they want That they are what they want And it's your for us You hold my hand And show me the way You know let me follow And my legs to shake Peel out of my life I go sing your praise since you touched my life, I know that he said I remember when so far Tiny like rapper In the plenty for lava mm-hmm. But this story never finish, yo Cause when I get to God when they answer me, yo Suddenly you change me Gave my life a meaning Now I am counting my blessings every season, no Daddy, now you stood by me On trials and challenges, they've been won by me Really and truly, you're my savior, you're my father There can never be another You're my shepherd, my provider Always, you daily know me, you they answer My prayers, you're my lord and my master No, they ever let me suffer like I'll keep on loving you But you have been so good I pour my heart to you yeah. But this your love is true If no be you
Hello, it's such a privilege and honor to be with you today. Trust you are doing great. Okay, um, I, I, I will start. I want to ask you a question or get your opinion about something. Let me start from that. Just imagine that you were in an event, an event that you like. Okay, let's say your favorite celebrity and you just got a wonderful position where you are seated and you're seeing him or her clearly and you're about to enjoy the show or whatever it is that your favorite celebrity does. And while you're sitting down there, somebody you don't know, a stranger, comes up to you and asks you to stand up. That he or she would like to sit at your position. Will you oblige the person? Will you obey? Okay, let's adjust the scenario a little bit. What if the person that asks you to stand up so that they can take your position is some, let's say, your teacher or your lecturer? Will you obey? Will you listen? Okay, let's adjust it a little bit more. What if it is your sibling, your brother or sister? Will you stand? What if it's your dad or your mom? Will you stand? Okay, in all of the scenario, for each of the situation, if you listen or obey in either of them, what is the motivation? Why did you obey? Why did you listen? I can hear some of you say, I'm not listening to anybody at all. And if you're not listening to anybody, why would you do that? Why? What's your reason? There is no right or wrong. Your decision, your reason is actually the most important thing. Okay? So why will you listen or why will you obey or why will you not obey? Okay, we're going to discuss something that is in line with that. But before we proceed, let's pray. Before we go ahead, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you, faithful God. Lord, we ask that as we share, that you open our eyes. We ask that you inspire our hearts, that through this lesson, our lives will be transformed. Light will come into our life. And at the end, your name alone be glorified. Thank you, faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name, right? Amen. Okay, <clears throat> this period we are handling a theme that is a nine letter word that in our present generation, uh, people are no longer taking it lightly to, <laughs> to go by it. And this the word obedience. Obedience. So whenever people hear something, that's our theme for the month. Whenever people hear that, a lot of things come into their mind. No, I'm not talking about the political of the obedience. No, that's not the one. The obedience, as you know, it's now in, in this present day and time. Some people think is being, you know, make somebody look so weak, make somebody look sheepish, you know, behave somehow. So there is a way that that word resonates with some people. Okay, so we're going to go into it um, on our topic for today, which is talking about who gave the orders. So our theme this period is obedience, but for today. We are looking at a topic, who gave the orders? So you, the orders are saying O-R-D-E-R-S. So you remember the scenario we just talked about not too long ago. What if it is a stranger that is giving you an order to stand up? What if it is your sibling? What if it is your teacher? And what if it is your parents? Will you obey? Who gave the orders? Okay, now we're going to have a um, look at our anchor scripture. There is a scripture we're going to look at. <coughs> And it's going to serve as a bedrock for us. It's going to come from um, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Um, we're going to go from verses 1 to literally the end of verse 1 to 14. But from 1 to 31, that's what our anchor scripture. But we're not going to read all of them here now. There is also John 15. I will indulge you at your own time that you look at them. John chapter 14. And John chapter 15 from verses 1 to end. You can also read through Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay, so let me ask you, in your own perspective, what is the meaning of the word obedience? What does obedience mean to you? Is it something, a word you are cool with? Is it a word that makes you feel weak? 
What is obedience to you? What are the things that you can see before you obey someone, before you listen to do what someone wants you to do? And if I may ask you, do you think that obedience is a proof of love? If you love someone, will you obey them? Do you think that obedience can come out from the place of love? So if I'm loving some, if I love someone, somehow I tend to obey that individual. Do you think it's true? Or can you love someone and still disobey them? So is obedience a proof of your love for someone or not? Now, do you think there is something called blind obedience or blind following? Does obedience also mean blindly following someone without having a mind of your own, without having your opinion? Is that what you think obedience? Do you think it is that? Or there is much more to obedience than that? Okay, let me ask one more question. Do you feel uncomfortable whenever they, you know, somebody asks you to do something? You, you, are you somebody who doesn't like to be ordered around? Okay, there is a story that we're going to look at very soon. It is a story in the Bible in Acts chapter 21 from verses 10 down to 13. It's talking about someone, Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul is someone who, you know, from the scripture, who loved the Lord, who loved God with all of his heart and he true follower of the Lord Jesus and then something happened in these scriptures of Acts 21 from verses 10 to 13 he was in Jerusalem okay he was in a place and a prophet called Agabus came and prophesied in fact Agabus took um, um, what he used to tie his garment and prophesied and said that the person who owns these will suffer a lot of persecution in Jerusalem and Paul was planning to go to Jerusalem. And the people around who had that prophecy, they became so, you know, they became aggrieved. And many of them, they started crying for Paul. And Paul was uncomfortable and said, I am not just only ready to go to Jerusalem. I am ready to die there for the Lord Jesus. He wasn't just ready to obey, but he was ready to sacrifice his life not just to go but he was ready to even die for it he was ready to obey to the point of death what an allegiance what level of obedience this is obedience unto death that reminds me of what philippians talked about jesus he said that he he was obedient even unto death that jesus was obedient even unto death now, I can categorically say that the proof of love is obedience. If you really want to show that you truly love someone, the proof of it is how you obey. Do you listen to what they say? Do you follow what they say? Now, for human beings, that could be a limitation because we are not all knowing. So sometimes you might have to weigh what the individual is saying, even when you love them, to make sure that it's in line or the right thing to do. But when it comes to God, who is the all-knowing, who is the all-sufficient, who is the all-powerful, who is all-loving, with God, there is no gains you know, weighing it here or there. Never compromise your obedience. Never compromise. Make up your mind that from today, because of who God is and who God is to me, I will never compromise my obedience, no matter whatever is happening around next get to know god for yourself knowing god is what will help you grow your love for him and when your love for him grows your obedience follows suit also and finally love and obey god the why will come next why sometimes you say oh god but all my friends are involved in this and doing that and doing the mm -mm. why why what if you trust him and love him you will obey sometimes some of the things that god will ask you to do in the prevailing circumstances might not even make so much sense to you but if you trust him and obey him and not necessarily trying to figure him out you will get the reward of obedience definitely so as i bring this person to a close i want us to look at our memory verse our memory verse is coming from john chapter 14 verses 15 and it says if you love me 
you will keep my commandments. Now, I take it again. I remember verse is taken from John chapter 14, verses 15, and it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, before I leave, I will give you two quotes and then an activity which I would like you to, to handle as your home play through the week. And a quote I have here is by Ezra Taft Benson. He says, The greatest test of life is obedience to God. The greatest test of life is obedience to God. There is also this beautiful quote here by George Washington. He says, The whole duty of man is summed up in obedience to God's will. Begin a Bible plan. If you already on one, that's a beautiful one. Keep at it. And each day that you study the word, write out what God is saying that you are going to obey him for the week. I trust God that you've been blessed by this lesson as much as I have to be blessed by it. God bless you. So I come your way some other time. You have a fantastic day.